in the previous video, in the previous video, we have talked about the artery and arterioles. Uh, so in this particular video, we are going towards the next blood vessels, which are known as the capillaries. The capillaries, as you can see there, are the smallest and thinnest blood vessels to allow the exchange of substances. Before we go into capillaries in detail, in the previous video, I did mention to you that arterioles have a very important function where they have to make the blood flow slower before it enters the capillary. And uh, why does it need to make the blood flow slower? Uh, this is where we are going to be talking about the reason. So talking about the capillary, I'm drawing out a three-dimensional structure of a capillary. As you can see there, uh, the capillary has very thin walls. How thin are the walls? Uh, the wall is so thin that we just call it a one-cell thick endothelium. That is how you describe the wall of the capillary, right? And it has an extremely narrow lumen. How narrow is it? So to understand how narrow the lumen is, we have to look at its longitudinal view in two dimensions. So I'm drawing out the capillary in a longitudinal view, and it has the one cell thick endothelium wall. And as you can see that the lumen is so narrow that the diameter of the lumen is only seven micrometers. To give you a bit of context as to how wide 7 micrometers is, 7 micrometers is just basically the diameter of a red blood cell. So a red blood cell can only move in a single line as they are traveling through the capillary. That's how small the capillary lumen is. Another extra thing that we have to know is the wall of the capillaries are not directly attached to each other. They will have tiny gaps. Uh, between, between the capillary endothelium wall. The reason for the tiny gaps will be important when we are talking about tissue fluid in uh, another video. But for now, what we have to know is the when we look at the longitudinal view of the capillary, you can see the one cell thick endothelium wall. The lumen is 7 micrometers. It's so small that our red blood cells can only move one at a time in a single line and the capillary walls have very tiny, minuscule gaps. So drawing out the capillary in a cross section, you can also appreciate the one cell thick endothelium wall. You can see the lumen is seven micrometers and a bean-like structure over there. And that bean-like structure or that weird looking red color structure is just the biconcave cross section of the red blood cell. As a reminder that only one red blood cell can pass at a time when it's moving through the capillary because that's how small the lumen is. And I'm just going to label the tiny gaps over there uh, so that you can see that too. Now, the function of the capillary is to allow exchange between blood and body cells. And I'll be looking, let's just talk about an example of a body cell like a neuron. A neuron is a cell in our nervous system that constantly needs oxygen because oxygen allows it to do aerobic respiration. So this cell needs to get oxygen from the blood and within the blood there is a cell called the red blood cell that carries the oxygen. So I'm drawing out the blood vessel as you can see arterial and you can also see the capillary. What's the difference between the arterial and capillary? If you notice the arterioles have very thick walls and the capillary has very thin walls of one cell thick endothelium. So the, and I'm just drawing out a red blood cell over there and inside the red blood cell it's carrying oxygen. Now as a reminder, the arterioles main function is to slow the blood down before it goes into the capillary. Why does it have to do so? Because imagine if it did not slow the blood down and the red blood cell just whooshed through the capillaries very quickly. And if it traveled through the capillaries extremely quickly, the, there will be no time for the red blood cell to give its oxygen to the neuron. So the neuron will not obtain the oxygen from the blood. So the function of the arterial is it has to slow the blood down because by slowing the blood down, the red blood cells will move slowly within the capillaries in order to allow time for exchange to happen in the capillary. So as the red blood cell is moving very slowly, 
it enters the capillary then and the one cell thick wall of the capillary minimizes the diffusion distance so that diffusion can easily happen oxygen can diffuse from the red blood cell into the neuron so that's a good thing and the narrow lumen is also important because it ensures the red blood cell is as near to the body cell as possible now students will be like i don't understand that part because they were like can you elaborate further on the narrow lumen okay to understand the narrow lumen concept, let's look at three situations. I'm drawing out three blood vessels, and inside the blood vessels, you can see there is a red blood cell inside there, and they are, are transporting oxygen, and there is a body cell outside the blood vessel. Now, if we look at this first blood vessel, can the oxygen from the red blood cell diffuse into the body cell? The answer is no, it can't because even though the red blood cell is near the body cell, okay, uh, the wall is too thick. So that's not a good thing. Now, let's look at the second blood vessel. Can this oxygen diffuse into the body cell? The answer is also no, because the wall is thin. Yes, that's a good thing, but the red blood cell is too far away because the lumen is so wide that the red blood cell is not near the body cell. So the third example of this blood vessel is the perfect example. And in this case, oxygen is able to diffuse into the body cell because not only is the wall thin, but the narrow lumen forces the red blood cell to be as near to the body cell as possible. So the thin wall and the narrow lumen minimizes the diffusion distance so that uh, exchange can happen between the body cells and the blood. So in this case here, the red blood cell will provide the oxygen to the body cells and the body cells will provide carbon dioxide back to the blood. That is why the blood going to the body cells is oxygenated, which I've highlighted in pink, and the blood going away from the body cells becomes deoxygenated, which I've highlighted in blue. So this is what we have to know about the capillaries in detail. The, the capillaries have a one cell thick wall to minimize distance of diffusion and the narrow lumen ensures that the red blood cell is as near to the body cell as possible so that diffusion can easily happen.